So many people think air is air and that all air is created equal. However, that may be true in some situations, but not for air plasma systems. Having the clean dry air can dramatically affect several things. The main ones, the cut quality, and the consumable life. Hi, my name is Rata Sachenda, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how I went from this to this and show you how and why I built this clean dry air system for my shop. When it comes to the air produced by my air compressor, it's most often that the air leads to condensation and contaminants. If left untreated, it could travel through the air system and cause problems, especially for pneumatic tools whose performance relies on the quality of air delivered. In my case, the Hypertherm Plasma Cutter used on my CNC plasma table. Because having clean, dry air was fundamental to the machine's productivity, I set out to design and build an air supply system to support my needs. The goal for this air system, one, have a flexible configuration, two, have a clean organized layout, three, I wanted it to be reliable and low maintenance, four, support a 500 square foot shop, and five, support future pneumatic systems. With my goals in mind, it was time to lay it all out in 3D using my favorite 3D CAD program, SOLIDWORKS. My setup starts with a two-stage 60-gallon air compressor to handle the demand for the plasma cutter. It then goes into the shop to a five-stage air desiccant filter that captures the moisture, particles, and oil before it goes into the dryer. Then goes into the refrigerant dryer, which cools the air even more and causes the water to drip out of it. I guess you can compare this to a dehumidifier used to dehumidify a room. Air is then routed to an air manifold, which then splits off to multiple downstream machines. In this case, one being my plasma machine. Because my shop is less than 500 square foot, I went with half inch copper pipe versus three quarter. I think the half inch is more than adequate. I know there are other piping systems out there, but I went with copper because the pipe was readily available and I like all the plumbing supply options to choose from, such as the type of fittings and ball valves. Once I have the system built, I'll go into more detail on the system sequence and the different configurations. With the design direction established, I ordered all my materials I would need. I'll leave resources and links in the video description for this air system diagram that I've created and all the items I used in this video. With that out of the way, let's build this. The first thing I did was start connecting each filter using yellow gas tape and pipe sealant to guarantee a leak-free system. For air applications, I prefer the yellow Teflon over the white because I feel it offers a better durable seal and applying the pipe sealant is just added insurance. At each end of the filter system, I use union fittings. This makes it easier to connect the pipes together while making it easy to disconnect if necessary. Next was to use a whip hose to feed the air coming from the air compressor from the shed. I fed the half inch hose through a one inch flexible PVC conduit that then leads into the shop. I found out this to be the best flexible way to plumb the air from the outside shed into the shop. I did look into using galvanized and black pipe, but I didn't want to worry about the maintenance. To clear the conduit, I trimmed off the black rubber piece from the whip hose. Also, the Flexzilla hose is ready for extreme temperatures and the PVC conduit will protect it from the elements when buried in the ground. I did have some concerns with the sharp 90 degree bends, possibly kinking the hose, but once the system was pressurized, it wasn't an issue.
Next was to mount the filter system. To provide support, I used some plywood to provide the back and needed to mount the air filter. I used my diagram as a cheat sheet to get each tube length and fitting required for each section. To clear the valves from the wall, I offset the pipe using these bell hanger mounts. They came in super handy to provide the clearance needed. And by no means am I a plumber, but after watching a few videos on how to prep solder pipe, I decided to give it a go and I'm glad I did because I really enjoyed it. I think there's just something therapeutic about seeing the tin flow with the help of the flex. I'm also glad I had a table vise to hold it while soldering because that stuff gets pretty hot. Also, one thing I do with the valves is take out the handles when soldering so it doesn't melt the rubber on the handle. Because I would be adding an air quarter reel in the near future, I installed the manifold block to help split the air when needed. To easily locate where it needed to be, I did another dry fit of the section and then pushed it back to see where the mounting holes would need to be. Then took it back off to install the air coupler, supplied plug screw, and ball valve. Now with the system fully soldered in, I open up the valve at the air compressor to check for leaks. Using soapy water, I found two areas where it had leaked. Almost all the units leaked, which I sort of anticipated because I wanted to see if I needed to seal off the threads or not because theoretically they are supposed to be sealed at the face. The second area sort of surprised me. The leak came from the screw handle of the ball valve. Once I added a tape and some sealant to the leaking unions, all was fine. For the valve, I just torqued it down a bit and that seemed to do the trick. Last but not least, to give it a clean look, I sprayed some WD-40 on a scotch pipe pad and cleaned up the pipe. Not necessary, but it gave it a professional look. All right, so I got the plumbing all pretty much wrapped up. Um, now I'm gonna kinda go over how everything kind of works, uh, show you what all the valves do and all the different configurations. Uh, so let's get into that real quick. So the first thing I want to mention is the shed with the air compressors on this other side of the wall. So what ends up happening is you have in incoming air that comes up and then uh, how I set it up now is it's going to go up this way around this valve is open through the uh, five stage um, air desiccant filter system. Then pretty much this valve is going to be closed because I'm going to have it go down to the air dry, uh, air refrigerant dryer. So let's open that up and that goes down this way, over, over, over and then down and on the, uh, if you look at it there, it's on the input side of the uh, refrigerant dryer which is this guy there and then this pipe here um, is the output so once the uh, air is dried it comes back up over this way and then we have to open up the valve this way and then over down and 
I have an air coupler. Uh, so when I want to split off to like a, a quarter reel, I can do that. Um, but right now I have another valve uh, that goes all the way down. And this is the primary reason why this setup is here is so that I can feed it up, down, and into my uh, back of my um, Hypertherm uh, 65 Power Max. Uh, this is my plasma cutter uh, for my CNC plasma table there. So pretty much the whole purpose is we're gonna use it. The air filter, the air dryer to provide clean, dry air for this uh, uh, plasma. Um, so that's the main configuration, how I'm gonna do it. And you're wondering, well, how come you have all these valves, all these different pipes, and why they route it that way? And the main reason is, uh, let's say I didn't want to use this air filter system. I can turn it off, then that will block that port. So then I'll just open up this port, and if you follow that pipe, the guy goes up, up, and around, and I'll close the inlet and outlet valves for the uh, dryer, and then I'll actually open up this guy, and right now, I'm actually feeding um, direct air from the air compressor, bypassing the air filter, and the only reason why I set it like that is, let's say this thing takes a crap on, a crap on me, um, I can bypass it, and not have to be, not have it downtime. And same thing goes for my air dryer. Um, I want to just use my air dryer system, I would do the same thing, just bypass this guy, or if I wanted to bypass the air dryer, close it, close it, and then uh, open it up so that I just use the air filter system. And that's just in case my air dryer takes a dump on me for some odd reason. But yeah. Um, I just kind of wanted to show you um, how that system worked and uh, hopefully it all makes sense and uh, you can see why I plumbed the copper pipe the way I did it. And um, I'm using half inch pipe for all my plumbing here just because I'm only running a short distance in this uh, shop. This shop's only roughly 500 square foot. So if I was running a larger shop, you know, I would go with three quarter, but I think half inch is more than enough uh, for my uses here on this table. So. But yeah, it's mainly to feed that guy, which is the CNC uh, plasma table. Now with everything complete, let's take a look at the end result while I share my closing thoughts. The whole project took about three days on and off to complete. I spent about 900 for the refrigerant air dryer, but these normally are about 1600, but if you shop it around, you can find a pretty good deal for under a thousand five stage filter I bought on Amazon and at that time was under 400. The fittings along with the copper pipe and tools were right around 300. So all in all this complete system which is everything after my air compressor was right around 1600. The great thing about this air system compared to others is that it's very low maintenance and pretty much on autopilot. The only thing I really need to do from time to time is refresh the desiccant beads. At first glance, I know this system can be a little bit overkill right now for the shop. However, I do plan on adding additional air system tools in the near future. Also, this system is not only intended for plasma, but if you paint cars or have air hungry tools that need good air quality, this would be, I think, a good fit. But most importantly, I get clean, dry, quality air delivered to my pneumatic tools, which in turn makes them last longer and operate better. So far, it seems to be doing a great job for what I'm using it for. But the test of time will really show how this air system performance holds up. If you're looking to build one like this, I've created a detailed diagram that breaks down the air system layout piece by piece. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to smash that thumbs up button and subscribe for DIY projects like this. With that out of the way, time to get to the next project.